Hi everyone. I really wanted to get a couple things clear about no code itself so that we start off on the right foot. So what is no code? No code or visual programming is actually a way to build digital products, apps, websites, etc., without writing a line of code, without having to learn how to manipulate code itself or write programming language. So what can be built with no code? Well, some people often think that it's just about building websites or landing pages. So they think of um, software such as Wix or Squarespace. But the reality is that no code has really come from very, very far. And the tools that are now out there allow you to build messaging apps. They allow you to build marketplaces. You can build productivity tools. You can build dashboards with analytics. You can create all types of things. I've even seen uh, decks that are now coming towards me of people who are building uh, solutions to be able to create VR experiences without coding at all. And I know that artificial intelligence is really close behind. There's more and more uh, sort of products out there that are really looking to address that need, right? The next question is, why is no code a smart way to build a startup, right? Um, as everyone knows, building a startup is not just about building the product, but it's actually super important to also build the community around that product to be able to make it a revenue generating business. So what do I mean by that? I mean like customers, for example, you have to line up your customers, you're going to have to line up partners, and you also need to learn sales, marketing, you need to learn basic finances. So. When people talk about building startups with no code, they're not really saying, okay, just learn no code and you're okay. What they're really saying is that building no code is the easiest way to get your product to market. No code actually makes it much faster for you to be able to build a product. So instead of taking sort of months or potentially years to build out something, uh, you can do it in weeks. So it's really, it makes a big difference um, because usually you're really bringing that first product to market, testing it out and seeing how it goes and iterating on that to be able to find perfect market fit. The second reason is that if you don't need to depend on expensive developers, you actually don't need investors to start your startup and you don't need a tech co-founder to start your startup. So that's really powerful for non-technical founders who I often see going to events, trying to find uh, you know, a right match in terms of uh, tech co-founders. And it can be very frustrating, it can waste a lot of time, and it's a little bit demoralizing, frankly. The other thing that's really worthwhile mentioning is that the learning curve is way shorter with no code. And what that means is that you as a non-technical founder can actually learn how to build with no code in a matter of weeks instead of years. Um, it takes about six years to be a really good coder. You can also hire people that have a lower skill set. Developers usually cost between $100,000 and $200,000 a year, um, but you can hire people who are no coders at a fraction of the cost. So it really is gonna affect not only the short term uh, of your startup, but also the longer term when you start building out a team. Um, you'll be able to teach pretty much anyone how to edit your product in a meaningful way without having to write a line of code. And that's super powerful, right? So maybe about 20 years ago, the best skill you could have to build a startup was actually the technical skills. But I think that we're kind of coming uh, full circle here and we're going back to kind of the old school model where sales was kind of the, the key thing that you needed to have to be able to build a business, right? Uh, if you think about, uh, you know, just 50 years ago, if you were a good salesman, you were much more likely to succeed in a business than if you were, um, you know, an IT person. So I think the power is now coming back to people who know how to talk, who know how to build empathy with their customers, who know how to understand their needs. And that's why building a startup as a non-technical founder has never been a better time. So how technical do you actually have to be to learn no code? You really don't need any technical skills to get started with no code. Uh, now, obviously, if you don't really know how to use a computer, uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to learn how to no code as the first thing you would do. But for everyone else, honestly, it's very accessible. And that's the beauty of it really is that it's empowering a whole new generation of people. So what do you need to get started no coding? You really just need a laptop or a desktop computer, an internet connection, and then um, really the ability to sit down for about half an hour, one hour, two hours a day, a week to be able to give the time that it takes to learn these tools. But really, if you have the motivation, uh, there's really not much that's holding you back. Another classic question is, do I need to quit my job to build this startup or to learn how to no code? I always recommend to the startups that I train to see it as a kind of transition. 
Yes, once things start really going fast, you're gonna have to probably quit your full-time job. But until then, and while you're really testing out the market and generating your first uh, dollars in revenue, you shouldn't be quitting your job. If you've quit your job, you'll just have more time to be able to learn quicker, so that's okay as well. But I don't usually recommend people who are in full-time jobs to quit their jobs automatically. You can literally build this, you can send it out into the market, test it, start generating revenue, and when the risk level is much lower, you can then take that big jump and jump out of your full-time job to pursue your dreams. So are no-code startups taken seriously? The answer is yes. So give, let me give you a couple of very basic examples that will illustrate different reasons why. Dividend Finance actually raised $300 million in funding and processed over $1 billion in loans, completely no code. Plateau is a company that got accepted into Y Combinator, one of the biggest accelerators in the world. Another example is Follow Up Edge, which actually scaled to $30,000 in monthly recurring revenue without writing a single line of code. So yes, building no-code startups is not just a joke. This is really about building a business and generating revenue quickly before really even needing to have investors on board. So it's a very powerful thing. Let's talk about cybersecurity. So is my app secure if I'm building it with no code? Uh, this is a question that I often get and um, what I often tell people is that actually the level of cybersecurity that are going to be in some of these no-code apps or no-code building tools is much higher than what you would get in doing custom coding. Because usually when you're custom coding, you really don't have time, energy or resources to be able to develop all the protocols needed to be very safe online. And so working with no-code tools is actually an easy way to leverage other people's work and to have safe, cyber secure apps on the market quickly. Christian, I've been hearing a lot about this low code. So what's the difference between low and no code? What low code is really is basically as soon as you write a single line of code into a no code app or no code solution or no code website, it becomes low code. So it's also the next best thing to do after no code is low code, right? You don't want to custom build everything from the ground up because you can build such a large amount of it with no code and then just write a couple line of codes to be able to get maybe one task done that you can't do with the specific software that you're using. So go no code, go low code. You can code, but just gonna cost a lot more money, it's gonna be a lot slower. And honestly, I even recommend to developers to use no code and low code. It's a quicker way to get to what you're trying to build and to really get it out there. Christian, is no code gonna destroy code? Is there, are there not gonna be any more coders out there? Uh, my answer to them is absolutely not. The entire no code movement is built on coders building platforms that allow people who are non-technical to build their own software, right? So to build those tools themselves, you need a huge amount of coding or development power, right? So it's never really gonna replace it. What we're talking about here is that developers are actually gonna have to focus on the much more difficult, cutting edge things that have never been written before. So no, no code is never going to completely kill coding. Is no code just for building products? No, they're also for building businesses. So what do I mean by that? No code is not only about just building the applications or building the websites or the web apps, it's also about automating certain things that are happening in the back end. So really automating your sales processes, automating your operations, automating certain parts of marketing. And so it's really about building a business, not just about creating and building software, right? Is my idea safe? Ideas are really not that important. What's really important is the execution behind them. The other thing that you should understand is that investors and mentors usually will not sign any kind of NDA or a non-disclosure agreement. So I would say don't be too worried about the uh, idea being protected unless you have an incredibly sort of uh, a crazy algorithm that you can get patented or you've just uh, you know created some kind of incredibly innovative um, cure to cancer that you want to get patented before you actually bring it onto the market. But for 99% of startups I see out there, it's actually just a little bit of a fear. I know I had it in some of my first startups and, uh, and honestly, it just slowed things down more than anything.